Jim Carson, Gillette, Wyoming, Gillette. Marine Corps, First Marine Air Wing, Hams 164, 46 helicopter squadron. Now I'm in 68 and 6, well, I went in in 67, got out in 69, August 25th. <clears throat> I uh, was a PFC, turned 19 and 20 in Vietnam. Uh, I enlisted when I was 17 in San Francisco, and uh, I'm very grateful that the 500 of us that tested in Oakland at that induction center in Oakland, 500 that day, how many passed? Ten of us, five of us in the Army and five in the Marines. The rest of them flunked and went 4F. They didn't want to go to Vietnam. We fought through three blocks to get in there, and we had to go through six blocks going out, being spit on and everything. This is 67. In California. In California. California. Hate Ashbury. I moved out there in 63. I got threw out of my house in 63 at 13. My dad was a tax cheat. And uh, I'm grateful that I got to put myself through school. Worse than decent fit cents an hour. Know what the value of the old school. Sure. And the Marines was good to me. They taught me a lot of discipline. I was a drug addict before I went into the Marine Corps, and I really got into drugs over there. And uh, of course, the enemy was all doped up coming against us and hit us every two hours around the clock at night, always in the dark, on every LZ, and I Corps from the DMZ, Fubai, Quezon, Dong Ha, Camp Carroll, Rock Pile, Hill 55, and Wall. And we went on ship. Valley Forge, doing operations off of that. The last six, eight months I was there before I come home. <clears throat> July, Bull Mariner, I've seen the most terrible things as friends. We played cards the night before. We dropped them on a zone in a minefield. And we had to bend back them back out in arms and legs. They're the whole ship. And me and another guy, friend of mine, Coy Stevens. We went ballistic. The ship, I mean, the ship was full of people everywhere, wounded, dying. And uh, friends, brothers, and I'll never forget the pain of coming home from a war within a week and being discharged with nobody to care a damn about you. That's why most Tom Fitz been out in the street and just killing the pain with drugs and alcohol from not being welcome home. I go outside the Marine Corps base, MCRD in San Diego. It's called Veterans Village. Some of those guys have lived under a tree for 10 years here and 10 years there and 10 years there. See, I helped start Narcotics Anonymous here in my house in Sheridan, March 6th of 80 in Sheridan at West Park Trailer Court. I've always been for the vet. I got sober July 4th, 1978, had my last drink, I went into VA to die. Not knowing my name, I couldn't read my watch. And I asked Christ in my heart, he changed me in a twinkle of an eye. 300 vets made fun of me, but I'm the only one still alive, 37 years later. He's the real deal. Seven times I've died, he's brought me back to life for that purpose in his plan and his will is to share the love of Christ to all my friends and brothers that have spent their life over there. I had 19 and 20 of my 20th birthdays there. Pretty impressional, I got Agent Orange and I've been fighting my diabetes and all the problems from PTSD and they label it as schizophrenic in 78. In 1980, they wrote the mental health book, you know that. That's when we start, I started NA, I met the founder, Jimmy Kennan, and had the very first NA meeting in 53. <clears throat> and he sponsored my sponsor. He's 58 years clean now, dying of dementia in L.A., Bob Barrett. My God says he's colorblind. My, my sponsor's black and I'm white. He allows U-turns. When, when he got out of San Quentin, he didn't stay clean because he didn't help others. From 53 to 60, in and out two or three more times. Now, he was a lifer in the Army. People don't know that. And he got discharged, a dishonorable discharge, coming back a heroin addict from Germany in the 50s. Strike one, you're black. 
strike two, you're a heroin addict. Strike three, you got a dishonorable discharge. Who will take you in? Jimmy Kennan from Scotland that started N.A. As Bill Wilson started A.A. in the 20s and 30s. He worked with Jimmy and Betty, his wife. He didn't know how to help because he wasn't an addict, but he's an alcoholic. But he blessed us with the 12 steps that come out of the Bible. And uh, they sponsored me, long distance on the phone. I had all of Montana, all of Wyoming, half of South Dakota, half of Nebraska, still my region, upper Rocky Mountain region. I've been to 35 countries on my own dime. I've never took a red cent to travel to do anything. I'm a, not a hireling, I'm a servant of the Most High God, an ambassador commissioned to do what I do out of love and respect to give people the dignity that they deserve to be welcomed back into the human race. They don't have to die alone ever again. On our medallion, we say, no addict seeking recovery need ever die. I'm starting a ranch over by Moorcroft called the Hope Ranch. Been doing it for three or four years, about to go bankrupt any day if I don't get some help. A bunch of campers, we got 35 acres, seven miles out of town. It's a dream. We helped do it 35 years ago in Las Vegas, out in Death Valley in Prump. House is still running. There's only five of us that had a dream and a vision. Glenn's running the house. We had a church on the strip called Jesus is the Answer. We had a meeting 24-7. Fed the homeless, went in the prisons, did everything that God commissioned us to do. Take care of the widows, the orphans. Feed the homeless and go visit those that can't come to you. Tell them that he's, they care about you. <clears throat> and I'm just very grateful what God has blessed me with. Uh, 30 Days from a Day, our World Convention for Alcoholics Anonymous is going to meet in Atlanta, Georgia couple hundred countries, a couple hundred languages, saying the Lord's Prayer together. What a powerful, powerful. In 85, I drove my BMW 5,600 miles to go speak in Montreal, Quebec. I had seven years clean in 85. Got to Bill Wilson's wife, Lois, that when the 30s, they come out to Sturgis on their Harley with their sidecar. And they loved the bikers. And it's because it wasn't, he was stockbrokers, you know, Bill. And uh, the love for people, no matter where you come from, Yale or jail, Park Bench to Park Avenue, they all need to hear the same message. I thought it was tunnel vision just for the vet, but it's for all of mankind. Now we're in 198 countries. <clears throat> we're having our convention in Rio de Janeiro here pretty quick for Narcotics Anonymous this year. But AA's on my birthday, July 4th. I want to be there, and I don't know how I'm going to get there. Trust in the Lord. He's got the plan. I don't. I went to college here in Casper and graduated in 75. Through Atlantic Richfield, give me a scholarship. The guy I helped through college took my family and stole my kids. Kept me from seeing them now for 38 years. I never seen my grandkids yet because I wouldn't join a Mormon church. And I got a real deal, and I don't have a phony God an imposter, a counterfeit. I got the Jesus of the Bible, the real King James, not another translation of nothing else. But I just thank God and I might see my kids. Maybe this two weeks ago we had our state NA convention here at the Ramada, or w Wyoming. We had, uh, what, 10 states and 137 people shouting glory. 35 years ago when I started NA, it was the best thing I ever did. It's giving that you get. It's letting pride. There's only one thing stand between me and you, and it's me. Only one thing stands between me and God, and it's me. When we swallow our pride, put it in our hip pocket, tell the truth and quit squeezing each other with a lie. What's going on in the inside? We need an inside job. If you ask him in your heart, has he changed your heart forever? Governor Meade come to our veterans meeting in, in Gillette on last Tuesday. Oh, I forget how many months back now when he was still running for office. And <clears throat> he was bragging about being a prosecutor and hurting, putting more addicts in prison. That's not the answer. They needed to be in a recovery. That's what this Hope Ranch is. I started the subdivision 14 years ago, Covenant Subdivision out of Gillette out by Wydak. And two of the people out of jail, I helped people get out of prison. One of them, uh, 
were arson, I had three rentals. They, they arsoned two of them, one on Thanksgiving Day and the other one on Christmas Eve. Two of them confessed to the arson. They ain't done a thing about it. It's cost me $220,000 now in debt. And I just thank God that there's a purpose and that God has a plan. I don't know how I'm going to get through it, but I am going to not be a survivor. I'm an abundant victor over any circumstance, an overcomer through the Word of God. And I just trust, two weeks ago when I lost my best friend, died in my arms here May 15th. A little white dog that rode on my shoulder for 22 years. Most photographed dog in Sturgis has been going there for 52 years, little boo-boo. And when he died, I tell you what, I still cry. Yeah. This little guy <clears throat> had a heart of a lion. He's only three pounds. But he had his Harley hat and coat, his little, only had two teeth left. And he had, a heart, had a nine heart attacks. And I prayed over eight, and God gave him back to life for four years since he had cancer operation in Buffalo, and he took out a tumor because he's a cryptoid. One ball in and one ball out, he said it could cause cancer. Well, it did 18 years later. Got the size of a tumor, the size of a grapefruit, and a three-pound dog. But God spared him, my life, spared him for four more years to have somebody on my next friend. That was in the newspaper, wasn't it? Uh, did, no. Was, it, was your story? No, published? no, they never did. I was talking to a news record reporter that he was going to come, but they sabotaged that deal. But uh, I just, you know, I like, I got a, a, a life side portrait from a camera phone from my Christian friends that come from Minneapolis. They have a car wash in Sturgis. And they took a picture of it, and the girl's a lifetime artist, painted it. Looks just like a picture. Big, she sent me a dot from Minneapolis. So I've got it at home. But uh, this year, when I, I did it for the kids, I played Santa Claus for the kids. Uh, they ain't never seen my own kids and grandkids. That was in Pittsburgh. I had my third heart attack. And you know what them little kids asked for? Their families are all split up and dysfunctional. The grandparents are raising their kids as grandkids. It's cold, it's Christmas, it's snow, and, it, and it, what them little kids get in your lap, they don't ask for toys. You say, yeah, Grandma up there and Grandpa, would you pray for him, Santa? Would you pray for him? Touch your heart, and then the handicapped, and the homeless. Come in, they don't want nothing, but they need a blessing. In the power of prayer, I lost every job through praying, because I can't deny him. My God's greater than any stupid job. They tell you, you can't do that. Well. I'm afraid I'm, I got to do that. I'm committed to the moan. And when he saved my life from Nam, brought me home. I live <clears throat> in denial, not knowing how to change. The thing I love the most because of this. What that says, machine gunner. Door gunner. And you don't know who you might have shot. But God does should know your heart and the motive of your heart. That he wants to bless you. Because you did it for God, duty, and country. Yeah. And simplify, we're always faithful. I don't know about the pride for anybody else, but when I graduated boot camp, I never had nobody in my family ever care about me. Because my mom died last year and they starved her to death, my brother-in-law. She told me why my dad was trying to kill me all my life, because I wasn't supposed to be aborted before I was born in 49. Put me in prison, stole everything I ever had all my life. Beat me, stabbed me, shot me, set me on fire, set my house on fire. Did everything he could to kill me, run over me. But God's greater than what the devil meant. For bad, God turned to good. Never got to lead him to the Lord right up to his 80th birthday and he died that night, seven years ago. That's on him. But forgiveness is the greatest healing message we got for the vet. And forgiveness starts with surrender, from total surrender, unconditional surrender, with a final no reservations. Tough death to us part. Either he's everything or he's nothing. And that's why we did this for our freedom of religion, right? That them that will be over here, and if we're the real men, we're to fight for our families. And our faith is what it's all about. Without faith, you can't do it. We got to trust the orders we took. We did what we was told. <laughs> and we have to answer one day for what we did. But we did it out of orders. 
but I'm grateful to be here. It's been a dream for 47 years. And uh, I'm just asking God, bless me with a stomach surgery six weeks ago. I lost 55 pounds. Okay. Greg Holloway invented the lap band surgery in Scott's Bluff before he moved to Gillette in 56. And uh, he uh, had to get on Medicare, Medicare to pay for it and AARP. My heart surgeon's the best in town right here, Dr. Matter. And uh, his wife's a Vietnam vet. She's surgeon. Here. She's one of our volunteers. Here. Yep, she's here. She's I don't here. met her yet, she's but it's a, because of their lady. their Christian faith, oh, yeah. their love for the vet, and it ain't because of money. They're a contract. They don't work for the VA. That's right. Took 24 years to see that CEO got thrown off, and she said she retired, but they was going to prosecute her. Herschelman last year from the Sheridan VA killed most of my friends, save a nickel and kill them. Won't give them the travel on their last days. And I tell you what, when Felicia Moss resigned a couple months later, her first in command, it kept him seeing her for 24 years. That last one up there running the house up there, Jamie Banks, God have mercy on her. But there is going to be accountability there. Thank God for Brasselman. The, Brassel? Yeah, yeah. His yeah. office. Glegos, you know Glegos? Oh, that brother there has helped me. And I can tell you, I don't know about Loomis and Enzi, but they have a part in this, but we got to help the vet. They can't fight them all, and we got to have a voice. And we got a voice, and he's a doctor, and he knows how it's supposed to be. And it's because his grace of God on him put him where he's at in authority, more given authority, more held accountable. So I'm just known as Easy Jim because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. <laughs> Jim. And there's no greater joy knowing that you guys are here for us today well, and yeah. letting us do this healing process and let it begin now. I mean, you, guys, you guys mean a lot to us. You know, we're, uh, we're the newer generation of veterans. Yeah. Well, my son just graduated, you know, uh, military police in Fort Leavenworth as a drill instructor, 22 years. Good. Married a Korean girl, sing me. I had never seen uh, Angela or Alexis, but I believe in God. Well, one of these days. Yeah. Well, in his timing. In God's divine timing, he said, don't leave before the miracle happens. Be faithful and wait upon him. He will do it. What we can't, it's impossible with man, it's possible with God. So what you're doing now will last for eternity because we'll see each other there because we knew each other here. Right. God bless you for what all you're doing. Easy, uh, I'm just running off. God bless you. God bless you.